Hey guys, so I just wanted to take a quick video um, showing you the tools, um, like a, maybe a minimum sort of amount of tools that you'd need um, to build the beast yourself. I just wanted to do this video because I'm not sure some of the names that I'm going to be using for tools are exactly what you guys call them in the States. Um, I've uh, been working on this list um, uh, for one of you guys, um, and, and I'll publish that for everyone, but I'll just put that there to remind myself. Um, when, when you're cutting framing wood, like this is just an example piece of wood, uh, one trick to look at is, is you measure how far along you want to cut it, and then you mark a line with a square. And then what, what guys do is they put a mark, like over here like this, or some do that, or whatever, just maybe a little mark. But what that does is that tells you that you want to cut on this side of the line. Because like if you've got your, um, I call that a drop saw, I think some people call it a mitre saw as well. Um, if you used your mitre saw or an electric saw and you cut on this side of the line, you're going to be losing like an eighth of an inch um, off your length every time. So you've got to know which side of your blade you're cutting on, so that you're cutting on the correct side. Because as you can see, let's see if I can get, get him open one-handed, the, the blades on these things are like an eighth of an inch thick. Um, so if you cut on the uh, wrong side, you're going to be losing that length every time. Um, and, and so it's a handy reason to use a square as well. So squares come in all, all sorts of shapes. Um, you know, you've got uh, big, big, long squares for like setting out um, plywood. Um, uh, for cutting the um, actual ply, if you're going to cut that yourself, I use a circular saw. I wouldn't recommend using a hand saw. It's just too much work, and, and I don't think you'll do it um, well or efficiently, um, but that's your decision to make. Uh, again, I've given you that video included in the series showing you how to use a circular saw to cut a straight line on a piece of ply. If you're going to use a circular saw to be cutting your um, framing instead of a drop or miter saw, um, you're going to have to be really careful. I've never been very good at cutting straight lines on um, on stuff uh, with circular saws. It's very easy to um, have them wiggle around and you'll end up with all of your material being cut incorrectly. So I wouldn't probably recommend using a circular saw, but it is possible. You might be able to make yourself up a jig um, where you have a, um, uh, a piece of, um, you have a piece of material screwed down to the bench like that with a piece of the framing wood and, and, and another little pad to sit it up on top like that. And then you could clamp your bit of wood down in the right place and run your circular saw um, down the edge of the, the um, guide, something like that. So you could rig up something if you wanted to still use a circular saw to, to save buying a drop saw. Um, so next on my list we've got um, uh, cutting the plastic pipe for the bars, um, a hacksaw is the best thing. You could use a, a normal saw, um, but you'll find that it'll really chip the um, ends of it. So if you've got something with a really small tooth on it, like a tenon saw, um, that might be suitable. But a wood saw, a hand wood saw, will actually like chip it a fair bit. Um, and then you, you've got to sand the... Um, edges of the plastic pipe so they're not all furry and sharp and, and going to cut you. Um, so you use a piece of sandpaper for that or, or like a file. And like this is just a sanding block I've made up myself. It's just an old piece of um, uh, belt sander belt um, when they break and, and you just put them around a, um, a suitable piece of wood and they make a great sanding block for a long time to come. Um, or you can buy purpose made sanding blocks. Um, that's what I call a belt sander. Um, it's got a, a belt that, um, I can't move it with my fingers, a belt that goes round and round and round on that spindle. Um, and that's good for sanding um, rough edges on, on like um, anything on, on, your, on your bits of framing wood or on the sides of your ply sort of thing. But again, there's not very much sanding to do in this project, so I wouldn't probably go out and buy one of them especially. I'd just use, if you haven't got an electric sander already, I'd just use a, a sanding block. Um, Drilling holes, um, so th there's two options, this is an electric drill um, or a battery drill. The battery drills these days, even the really cheap ones, uh, are really quite good um, machines compared to what we used to buy um, 15 odd years ago. Um, so you could probably get away if you haven't got one, if, if you haven't got either, to just buy a, a battery drill. Um, the one thing to look out for is the old NICAD batteries aren't really good. 
every time you get the thing out it'll be flat um, you want these lithium ion li i o n or there's a new one called lipo lithium polymer um, that's out as well uh, and they're the best sort of batteries to buy e even aldi sell um, uh, lithium ion battery drill batteries um, uh, these days so so you want some sort of drill to drill your holes um, if you've got one of these um, if you get one of these this is actually called an impact driver it uh, when it gets um, to a certain torque it actually rattles like a rattle gun um, it's got a quick release Let's see if I can get it out it's got a quick release bit in the end of it like that that these um, hexagonal bits go into um, very quickly and the, and the benefit of that is um, is you can get drill bits that have got the quick release bit on the end of them the the better ones I haven't got one oh yeah so the cheaper ones you see that's all one piece ignore the bit of tape there I've got as a depth measurement but what happens is when that drill bit breaks um, you've got to throw the whole thing away and get another one they're worth about five or six dollars each I like buying these ones you can see that that little thing there is actually like a drill bit chuck so you can remove that drill and throw it away and put another cheap drill in there to replace it so they're really good because they're quick to get in and out of the drill instead of mucking around with a chuck and that's just a chuck that I've bought for that to turn it into a normal sort of a chuck drill um, so when you're drilling your holes in your wood for your screws to go through you've, you've got to drill pilot holes in, in the first piece um, and, and then if, if your screws aren't self countersinking you'll want a countersink tool that's a separate countersink tool so you'd have to drill your pilot hole first with a drill and, and then use the countersink bit to, to make the countersink hole in the top or you can get these these little cool ones that are a combination of pilot hole bit and countersink tool so you run that one down in there um, and, and it does both jobs at once and again it's got that little quick bit receiver on it if you buy a normal a drill with a normal chuck a battery drill with a normal chuck you can put these bit receivers in them there's these type of ones that have got a, a locking head on them so you can still use um, quick release bits um, in something that's got a chuck in it and it makes the job so much quicker um, the other thing is to drill the holes for the um, uh, plastic pipe to go through for the bars it is I call these a spade bit I'm not sure what you guys call them 25 mil is one inch um, you always want to make sure that the, the tool you've got suits the bars that you've got um, before you, you go drilling a, a hundred holes sort of thing. Um, what else have I got here? Um, so you need a level. I'd, I'd like to show you my bigger level, but I can't find the thing. Um, the longer a level is, the more accurate it is because you've got, you, you're measuring along the whole length of the wood. And what we use a level for on the build is just making sure the um, legs uh, level as we apply the frames and, and put the frames on to, to build it up against the outside legs. Um, uh, I call it a straight edge. Um, some people might call it a ruler. Um, but, but either you can use like a, a big a big piece of metal or, or like a, a long square if you, if, if you happen to have one. Um, and this is just for making lines. Um, on things um, uh, like uh, on your ply to cut it out um, so that's that'll never bend or, or go out of um, square because it's a, an angle shape um, a piece of flat bar piece of flat material might end up with a bit of warp in it but the, the angle pieces are really good that's just something I've, I've found somewhere um, clamps you want a couple of clamps to be able to um, hold the um, frames onto the legs uh, or, or pieces of wood together while you um, screw them and, and these quick release hand operated ones are great instead of the old fashioned um, clamps that you need three hands and, and uh, two helpers to, to, to hold the work while you do the clamp up um, so you can almost use that one handed and, and then the release as well so you want a couple of those um, what else have we got I think that's about it guys um, like I said, I just wanted to run through it and make sure. Oh, a tape measure, of course. Everyone knows what a tape measure is. Um, I talk about um, measuring diagonals uh, once you um, uh, make the frames to make sure they're um, to make sure they're square. And if you if you're not familiar with that process, what it means is is because you can put something together and it 
and it's not actually square, it's a parallelogram. So what that would mean is, is um, I could actually, it would be easy to, to um, have something that was like that sort of shape. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, like, uh, so, so they're actually, those things are square with each other, but the, the angles in the corners aren't actually 90 degrees. So the way we make sure that, that something is actually square once we build it, um, like when you build the, um, uh, it's especially important for the frame that's got the um, plywood on the bottom of it, is you basically measure from this corner to this corner, and then you measure from that corner down to that corner. And those two diagonal measurements should be exactly the same. And if they're out by um, even like a, an eighth of an inch, um, I'd be resetting the frame. And, and basically, it takes takes a bit of familiarity to do it. And, and I can't describe it. I do it by sort of by eye. Um, but basically, uh, the, the, the diagonal that's too long, you move it move the side around a little bit and then remeasure and then if you if you've gone the wrong way if it's longer still than what you measured it before then you've gone the wrong way and you have to pull the, the this side of the frame back this way and that's what i mean by measuring diagonals um, of course you need a, a pencil to mark the wood uh, a permanent mark is good uh, or texture i don't know what you guys call them uh, is good to mark things out on like plastic or whatever um, yes i think that's it guys uh, I uh, wish you all the best, and if I can uh, give you a hand with anything, uh, any questions, um, or whatever, give me a bell, um, and I'll uh, I'll get some information together for you. No doubt if um, if one is having problem understanding something or, or doing something, other people might have the same problem as well, um, and I'm always happy to um, help, and, and I'll, I'll create um, more and more information as time goes on, showing people how to um, build these things. Anyway, thanks very much, guys, and good luck with your CFT.